All right, we've got six o'clock. Let's call this meeting to order. Roxanne, if you would take roll. If we would all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Did you have the same number of folks come to your meeting as I do to mine? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you for having me. Let's, uh, let's settle our hearts for just a moment in prayer. O oh God of justice and mercy, we thank you for the gift of life and for the opportunity to serve the people of our city. We'd ask that you would uh, help us to act with character and conviction and help us to listen with understanding and goodwill. We'd also ask that you'd help us to speak with charity and restraint. Give us, O oh God, a spirit of service and remind us that we're stewards of your authority. Guide us to be the leaders of your people. Help us to see the humanity and dignity of those who disagree with us and to treat all persons, no matter how weak or how poor, with the reverence your creation deserves. And finally, O oh God, we ask that you would renew us with the strength of your presence and the joy of helping to build a community that is worthy of the human person. We ask this as your sons and daughters, confident in your goodness and love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Mom. Hey, Mom. How you doing? Has the council had time to review the agenda for this evening? I will make a motion to approve the agenda. Awesome. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Now is the time for public comments. Do we have any public comments? I know you all missed me. We did. <laughs> Uh, I have a suggestion, and you don't have to take notice of it, but several things, when, when you're seated this way, when the mass exodus happens, it looks terrible to me. So I decided I'd watch it on TV and see what it looked like. It looked like the same thing. And I was wondering, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do like I do you, Aaron, when you were a student, but, uh, and uh, several other students out here, if it were there, you wouldn't see them leave, maybe. But we walk right in front of the camera. And if you just notice when people leave, it's just kind of like you all said something we didn't like, and bam, they go. Just a suggestion. I don't care what you do, but that's a suggestion. And I want to say uh, thank you to Carl. I think he's been a fantastic administrator. He come in on kind of a rocky start. We had some problems just before he came. And I've been coming so many years, I know about all the problems. But I think you've done a wonderful job, and I appreciate it as a taxpayer in Iola, Kansas. Uh, you should clap, folks. <laughs> Um, the other thing, as you know, this football stadium project has been on my mind and in my workload for almost a year now. And I've collected over $44,000 plus dollars plus in-kind service. So we are going to have an open house, and I've got my little invitations over there. And they say to the donors, but I want to show you what I'm sending the donors who have given. And there's a couple in the audience that have given, so they're going to get one of these, but they'll get uh, another kind. This is one I'll send out by email. We're having an open house August the 20th from 8 to 11. And Richard, right at this point, is going to write this story, but the football um, sports writer wants to write it too. So. Richard's going to get that settled with him. So there'll be a nice story in the paper about it. We have painted the dressing rooms. They look fantastic. We, never me, I just kind of boss it. Um, 
in the background. Uh, Scotty, who was one of my students, has been the overseer, and I bet he'll be glad when I step out of the picture um, because he still calls me Mrs. Hauser, and he never says no to me. So uh, you understand that, don't you, Aaron? So anyway, all the patches and leaks are gone. We've had enough rain to tell us the door being replaced has worked because we've all been a little nervous when we replace that door what's going to happen no water inside there the plumbing has been fixed all the plumbing in both dressing rooms is brand new not 1937 and it's all brand new and it's being covered i was telling richard it's being covered it is covered with a board and today they're putting some kind of a mold protection board on it bob you'll understand that but it looks really really nice and the Mustang stable has been re-roofed. We're going to re-roof the press box. We're probably going to put new windows in the stadium because they look pretty shoddy. Uh, we put a new door on the north side, and it's working well. And the coach is down there painting them right now. The coaches always have to do some of this. All the bathroom facilities will be handicapped accessible, and we will actually have something, a stall around the toilet which we've never had in either dressing room and the new epoxy floors are absolutely the most beautiful things I about cried when I saw them. when I heard the price of them I had choice of patching patching and painting or epoxy and I said what's the difference in price and I said do it I'll get the money and it's worth it if I had a million dollars I'd probably epoxy that whole thing because if any of you know what epoxy looks like it's top dollar stuff it's nice um, we've got a new fan the only fan that's ever been put in the visitors dressing room a new exhaust fan and I'm sure they're going to be happy and we have lots and lots of things the coaches are making lockers right now for the visitors dressing room they had just a few benches and that's all they had I got more space for them after kept talking to Jason at the city to see if he could help me store some of that stuff that's there because they said it couldn't be moved well we found a way to move it not with Jason's help they found a way to move it because I've been before them too and you know how persistent I am so I want to give you an invitation it reads that you're a donor but I wanted to show you what's going out I will not send individual invitations to any of the people in Iola that haven't donated to the project but it will be in the paper but I just don't want to pay that much for stamps but I'll give you each one and I'm going to give them one that's all I have to say be sure to speak in your mics <laughs> thank you thank you all right Good evening. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Iowa Booster Club, and as we all know, football season is just around the corner again. Um, you've been generous enough for the last several years to allow us to shoot fireworks at the home varsity home football games. Uh, we have five this year, three in September, two in October. Um, with your blessing, we would like to do that again. Come with me. And this is what we've done. This is what we've done every year in the past. Yes. And it's okay with the. Chief, yeah. Um, I'll make a motion that we allow them to shoot fireworks at the home games. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Looks like you're good to go. Carl, thank you for serving in our community and enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Those fireworks are a nice thing to have at the games. Do we have any other public comments at this time? All right, we'll move on. Has the council had time to review the consent agenda? I have. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second it. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to new business item A, the 2017 budget. Gotta have a here public hearing on this. Okay. At, th at this time, I'd like to open a public hearing on the 2017 budget. 
for any public comments. With nothing heard, we'll close. Go ahead and close the the hearing on the 2017 budget. Carl, do you have any comments on this? I'm going to make a motion then to approve um, the 2017 budget. I would second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Oh. Any opposed? Motion carries. One thing that the council discussed earlier as part of this budget was um, a motion in regards to the Van Scoy contract. Do we need to actually make that motion now? I will make a motion that we um, end the contract with Van Scoy. Second the motion. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion, or any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for your effort on that, Carl and Roxanne. We'll move on then to uh, prepare to move on to new business item B. Department vehicle purchase for unit 314. What have you got, Carl? The fire department requested to replace unit 314, the 2000 Ford Explorer, for the last two years, and the request was delayed due to budget concerns. The 2016 budget included 25000 for the replacement. The requested vehicle from the fire department is a Ford F-150 Super Crew Cab 4x4 four four with a 350 engine, six and a half foot bed. This particular vehicle on the state contract comes to $28,070. The fire department has stated that they would use 4000 that they have in a miscellaneous category to add to the 25000 that was budgeted in order to meet the cost of this vehicle. I guess the discussion is whether they should purchase one that is within the 25000 limit or if the council feels like the they need to have the four-wheel drive and the crew cab for the type of work they would do. Would do. Well, I can't understand why they have to have a new one. I, I know this one that they have is several years old, but it seems to me like uh, the uh, the contracts here are $28,070 and $29. They buy one that's a year or maybe two years old that has maybe fifteen or twenty thousand and, and save some money. And on the on the bids that they got, I saw that Shawnee Mission Ford and Rusty Eck are a lot cheaper than Twin Motors, and I believe if buy it from Twin Motors, uh, Twin pays taxes here every year. Uh, I understand that they service all of our ambulance. Another 
customers aside to get our ambulance taken care of timely. Um, their service per hour is probably 80 or $90 compared to 120, 130 with Shawnee Mission or Rusty Act. And we're always looking for economic development. Why do we want to push something away when we already have a business that employs 20 or 25 people? <clears throat> And why did they get bids from companies in the city that get breaks on fleets? I mean, their population is bigger, and they sell a lot more cars than they do here. Why didn't they go to Chanute or Fort Scott and compare that to Twin Motors' bid? And I still think that, uh, uh, that maybe they could use uh, a lesser vehicle. And besides, if they should buy one from Twin Motors or, I mean, if they should buy one from Shawnee Mission or Rusty Eck, I mean, two have to take somebody up to get it, and that is costly. I mean, you have to drive up and get it and back and hourly wage and lunch and gas and everything else. So I would like to see if they do buy it, buy it from Twin Motors. I'd agree with that. I'd, if we buy one, we should buy it locally. Uh, that's the, uh, they have employees, they pay property taxes and sales taxes. So I, I the difference there, uh, I think I buy that from Twin Motors. Can we uh, can we address the the reason we even need to purchase a vehicle at all? Sure. Why not? This is our only utility vehicle. Sorry. First, first of all, I was uh, I was tasked to. Portion of the Tim, stand over in front of the mic, please. Um, so I did. I even called Chanute. Um, Merle Kelly's too close to Twin, and they wouldn't they wouldn't price me anything. They didn't want to get it. I respect them for that. So I did. I did actually. I didn't try any further away than than um, Chanute on the regular bids. This vehicle is important. The vehicle that that it's replacing, it's been to. Biloxi, Mississippi, when Katrina came, it, it deployed the task force, which four of our people went. Um, Carl asked me why I needed four-wheel drive. Um, the department, other department heads in the city really don't use, need that. And I started launching the jet ski from a creek at three in the morning out in the county somewhere. So um, that vehicle, right now we've got the county's expedition that we could use to launch that j same jet ski, but we don't have two vehicles to do that. Right now we just have, well, the two that we got now. The, the county's vehicle sometimes is gone for training for, for uh, people going out of town for classes and such. So, but, um, you know, uh, Chief Leapart wanted, in 2010, it was 10 years old, and he said, you know, we ought to try to get that thing out of here while it's still got low miles and maybe we can get something better out of it. And that was six years ago. And it uh, seems like every year been for it that, you know, we had 30,000 budgeted last year for it and that went bye-bye and the year before we had the merger. So that was, we really didn't have a budget. So, and next year we don't have much. I don't trust it to go out of town. It's stranded several of us already, and, and it's just getting to the point where if you take it outside, you better have Lily's number in your back pocket. So it's, that's just, uh, it's just, it's just an older vehicle with a lot of miles on it. It's, it's uh, went bended. Uh, you know, Factor Springs, when they had their little tornado, it's been over there, and so. 
possibly we could we could entertain something like that. Um, have to tell Twin Motors or whatever. Kind of what we're looking. What's your something that's under the twenty five thousand dollar budget? What's the trade in on this on the on the Explorer? I understand everybody's thought on the less, but you have to remember buying a new vehicle, the price concession that a city government gets. I mean, it's eighty five hundred dollars. So you know, I can't compete with them guys as far as just cutting it to nothing. So I just go actual cost minus eighty five hundred to get to the. I think he's got the number. But you can, if you're going to try to get to that $25,000 mark, you're going to be, I'll be honest with you, you're going to be looking at a truck at 12 or 13 with 50 or 60,000 miles. I mean, government entities on that new side, the new ones, you can't com compare a used one to it. I mean, I've got, I mean, I'll be honest, I've got a 13 out there with 30,000 miles, a little bit nice truck being an XLT, but you know, I mean, I did, you know, when you brought that up, I just got to think when I got it. I thought, I give $29,000 for that truck at the sale, and it's three years old with 30,000 miles. Okay. okay. You know, as far as that goes, and it's like I told him, if you know, if they want Trade to Explore, I know them guys in the city probably have no use for it. I don't got a great deal, but I said, I'll step up and I'll give 1000 bucks for it. I mean, it's 16 years old, 140,000 miles, but, you know, just try to help out in any way I can, so. There's money in the budget for this. I would just as soon them get the new one that they need and pay what we have the money for this year. Well, Nobody if you needs. get $1,000 for the Explorer, you're only talking $386 difference. Yeah. Carl, could we do better auctioning it off ourselves in a city auction or something? No. Okay. We talked about purple wave. Purple wave, sometimes you get 300 some, sometimes you get 900 It just depends on who's there to buy. You know what you what need, and we should be able to respect and trust your decision and, and the vehicles that you need in your job. So I make a motion that we approve the department to purchase 2016 Ford F-154 by four crew cab pickup from Tim Twin Motor. I'll second All right, we've got a motion in a second. Did she say front twin? Yes. Man. Twin Motor, yes. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Can I, can I ask a quick question of you, Chief? I, was, I wasn't here last week, so I apologize for bringing this up late, but I noticed on the appropriations list last week there was a, was there a purchase of baseball caps? Yes. Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Uh, those are uniform caps. Um, some of the guys wear them, some don't. I don't buy those every year as part of the budget. Um, last year, I was 15. Uh, well, I think I bought those the year of the merger, which was 14. Um, I spent about the same amount there. That quantity has lasted up to you know, a few months. So I how, many, how many were there? Uh, I believe there was 36 caps. So, so out of 24, a lot of guys where there's out, so to speak, or they work a wreck and they get junk on them. And Is it a crucial part of the job to have those hats? A lot of guys want hats. Is it worth spending $700 on them? That I can't tell you. I mean, I 36 can hats cost 700 bucks. Where are you getting your hats at, Dan? Well, I got them. <laughs> <place to> own. <laughs> it's just hard for me to have a conversation about the city's finance issue and then read. To me, that's not a responsible way to spend taxpayers' money. It's seven hundred dollars on a hat. Part of our it's actually part of our dress you know, or uniform. It's I know, but we're in a situation now where we need to start. We need to start maybe some of that excess stuff and some some luxuries. Maybe we shouldn't be having. So that's all I have. What does that come to? Like nineteen dollars a hat, though. Yeah. yeah. It's just fairly reasonable. Less than it's bucks. still seven hundred dollars on hats. Did you say it was part of the uniform requirement? Is, they need it. That is issued to each person unless they say I don't want a hat. So they don't need it because they have a choice. If they if they could decline it, then they don't need it. So. Right. And that's what I don't buy them every year. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. 
Let's move on to item C. Uniform Public Offense Code and Standard Traffic Ordinance. The League of Kansas Municipalities puts out the Uniform Public Offense Code and the Standard Traffic Ordinance, ordinance for um, Kansas Municipalities. We adopt this each year. They include all of the new updates in state law. Uh, one of the differences this year is the inclusion of language that allows golf carts that the council approved earlier. Um, once this is adopted, the speed limit signs on North Cottonwood and Miller Road will be changed from 35 to 30 because the golf carts by state law cannot be used on streets where the posted speed limit is greater than 30 miles per hour. So other than that, the uh, provisions are the same as what we had last year. Um, after the adoption, then we'll make the change. I will make a motion that we adopt Ordinance 34. 66 and 3467 and authorize the mayor to sign those then I, so the speed limit is going to stay the same all the way down kentucky street and up miller road no change on kentucky right. only on cottonwood and it's be 35. miller only on cottonwood and miller well, i'll get there someday we've got a motion in a second all in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Let's move on to item D. Capers Life Insurance. Do you want to cover this? Um, CAPERS Optional Group Life added child coverage, which is a um, an option for employees paid for solely by employees. But as a formality, we have to adopt this again, the um, resolution. So. I will make a motion that we approve the CAPERS resolutions. Do we second the motion. Sign that? I'll second And authorize motion. the mayor to sign that. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Let's move to round table item A. Park land swap at the First Baptist Church. I received a request uh, several months ago from uh, Terry Sparks and Jim Doherty to consider making a parkland swap for the area just north of the First Baptist Church on kind of on the corner of Carpenter and Cottonwood. That uh, Meadowbrook Park fits into the category of a park area that was donated to the city. Um, may not have been 100% donated, but it came through a program with the National Park Service called uh, the Land and Conservation Fund Program. It was established in 1965 by the federal government to promote green space and use of park areas. The donations to the city of Iola took place in 1972 under a grant from this program. So Meadowbrook Park from north of the First Baptist Church up to uh, Buchanan Street. Um, if I got my streets right here, uh, are protected areas. Every year we have to sign a statement saying that we're still maintaining these park areas in accordance with the provisions of the original grant. In order to make a change in use, we have to meet the criteria that they've set aside. And this is under a special section in the, with the National Park Service. It says it has to be in accord with statewide outdoor recreation plans, 
properties of at least equal fair market value and of reasonably equivalent usefulness and location. So in considering options to swap out this parcel of land to allow the Baptist Church some expansion area, we looked at uh, other park areas to the south, I mean not other park areas, but other lots that were vacant that could have been purchased and converted. We first, uh, first attempt was a grouping of several different vacant lots uh, we forwarded that information to the Kansas office of Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks, and they said, well, it's got to be one parcel. It has to have a viable use. Uh, so we came up, uh, Terry and Jim looked at some other options and came up with a option to purchase a 3.7 acre farm parcel next to the disc golf course and Elm Creek in exchange for the parcel north. So in considering this uh, possible swap, uh, I think the council's um, deliber deliberation would be on, okay, we already have an existing parcel up north, has two basketball courts on it. How much use do we get out of this? And could we find another parcel would be suitable? And would that use of that parcel offset the loss of the one that we already have? Once the council weighs in on this, that decision will go back to the Kansas office. They will come out and make an inspection to see if they think it meets their criteria then that decision would come back to the city council. There would be a formal decision made by the council and they would go back to the park service for a formal consideration. So let's look at the uh, at least equal fair market value consideration. The, um, the, Nash or the uh, Kansas Park Service said that normally they require some kind of appraisal and I explained that we, we had only looked at this point on what the county appraised value is. So in terms of just county appraised value, the parcel to the south uh, is at least equal or greater than the park area to the north. It's kind of hard to weigh those because one is residential property and the other one is agriculture. In terms of size, the one north is 2.4 acres, the one south is 3.7 acres. And then the council will have to weigh in on if they think it has reasonably equivalent usefulness and location. Our community would use the park on North Cottonwood more than they would on the south end of town. And I think we should table it to a later meeting and get more community input on this. My question is, is and I'm not opposed to the idea here, is, is how much of that land is actually going to be needed or used by the church? Because I'd hate to turn over 2.4 acres to build a half acre building and then a two acre parking lot on what used to be a park and if there's a way that we can maybe do a smaller land swap there where they can get a portion to build the building, leave the park, um, generally intact and then I, I don't know what the church is actually planning to do with that acreage is I guess my other problem with th that I have right now. Well lots of times in the spring you see kids playing soccer or ball up there and so on and so forth and it's it's in a good location for <coughs> community activities. I, I can answer part of that question in terms of uh, if, if you look on the map you have uh, it doesn't show on this particular one where the utility easements are and where the floodplain is. So just guessing here, I would say that a, probably a third of the 2.4 acres is, is not uh, buildable because it has floodplain and utility easements. And we do have representatives here from the church if they want to address the second part in terms of what they might use it for. 
Carl, did you say that we would, the council would make a determination tonight? There would be a second inspection by, by whom? Well, if the council is not favorable to the process, with what information you have, then uh, there's no point for the state to come over and make an inspection. Right, of the but other if we piece. were favorable tonight, the state comes and then it comes back to us, correct? Correct. Then it comes back to you. Okay. So in that this would give us an opportunity to expand our our disc golf course because it's adjacent to it. That's one in theory. That is that is one of the proposed uses? Our, is it a disc golf course regularly used? Yeah. Yes. Would that be I, some? I would say that it's uh, one of them. It's used a lot. Yeah, I, I would say that the number of people who use that is higher than it's a unique a lot feature. of our other parks. Right. And, you, and we'd like to see an expansion over there of that, correct? Yes, we would. But I want to say something way back. I was on the planning committee 19 years, and I was there when we okayed that park. And the reason we okayed that kind of amount seems like to me there was a property so much property and so many people living in the area we had to have that roxanne shaking her head it's been so many years i can't remember because i quit when i started teaching which has been since 80. so it seems like we had to have so much land but in the on the other side of it we at CITF have talked and talked and talked, and Ryan's here too, and he has a conflict of interest, I'm sure, because he's at the Baptist Church. But we've talked and talked and talked. We could get international or bigger tournaments here if we had 18 holes. And we do have people playing on it a lot. Um, they haven't played on it so much since the EPA tore up things because we can't put any uh, hazards there until all of this, Berkeley doesn't want us to because all this grass has to grow back and they really kind of ruined the first and second hole when they did it because if you remember there was big, big hump there and they had to make a, if you know anything about golf, they had to really make a big swing to get to the first hole which made it hard and so, and the trees made it hard. They've torn down all but, <clears throat> seems like two trees and so if we had extra land, we might be able to do some moving of some of that. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't because I understand, and that park is well used, I would be the first to agree, but the disc golf course is too, even though it's in the south end of town. Well, Her family uses it every time they come to town, and I, I've had people tell me that's the greatest thing you guys have done. And I think we've done some pretty great things, so I don't know. Well, there's, <coughs> is it, uh, is it Buchanan that splits Meadowbrook Park? Is that? Yes. So there's Buchanan Street. To the north of that, there's a lot of playground equipment. To the south of it's just a basketball goal, maybe. And yeah, that's what they mainly do and play soccer. And they do play soccer and baseball right. and basketball. They do play that. They, I know because I drive down Cottonwood. Yeah, I got. I'm not going to argue that. I'm just. Would, would one of you gentlemen speak to what your use of the uh, land would be? Well, well. This has been something that, has, um, that we have recognized for some time, basically that we're landlocked. Uh, what really got this thing started was uh, we, we established a committee, which we love to do, and uh, basically we were going to do a renovation. We started a children's ministry in our church when we got our new pastor, uh, Randy Johnson, here. The one thing that he saw in the community that he... Uh, thought was something we should really concentrate on was uh, a children's ministry. So we, we have that up and going and 80 has been uh, in charge of it and we'll have as many as you know 40 children uh, in two rooms on the north end of our, our church. And 40 children in that area was pretty crowded. So we put together a team, and it's a renovation team, and one of our thoughts was we would go in and cut that gym in half and put uh, that children's ministry, basically shrink the gym to a half a gym so we could have the space. Um, and we've talked to architects, but you know, the, the end result is uh, 
we're just kind of crowded where we're at. Uh, and not only is the children's ministry area and other um, classroom areas a problem, but then there's a problem with parking. If we have 170 people at church, our parking lot is full. So, you know, we uh, didn't want to proceed with the uh, renovation until we could find out if this was a possibility and, and we appreciate uh, Carl's willingness to talk to us and we um, we really wanted this to be a win-win for everybody the way that we have kind of viewed the ground to the north of us is it's not utilized wood enough but I just don't see people there very often and now north of the pickleball courts and in that area with the you know the equipment uh, that's utilized i think more but uh, we're not against keeping the basketball goals there uh, we you know we could see you know probably a lot of that still remaining open because uh, like you said you know about a third of that 2.4 acres is in the floodplain uh, but, you know, we just, uh, I've also played disc golf, and I have been kind of surprised at the number of people that, uh, that have been there. And whoever opened it up and cleaned it up really did a good job because it was so hard before that, you know, it, I think it was too hard for most people. But anyway, that gives you a little bit of our background and why we're here. Uh, because it just made sense if we could do something with this land and we weren't opposed to an acre if we could you know it, it definitely would make it a little better if we had access from the north but we were just trying to figure a way to uh, accommodate uh, you know the, the people in the church and, and we also feel like it's something that's good for the community you know if, if we have a strong children's program it doesn't mean that just people in our church so if you any additions as far as playground equipment or if you leave the basketball goal there there would be public access to that we would uh, obviously have, to have that open yeah. You talked about the appraisal. Did you go by the county appraisal or did you get a real estate appraisal? We have not pursued a real estate appraisal. I would suggest that we get a real estate appraisal. I think we could do it without a real estate appraisal. Yes. But but the other problem with this the other problem the other problem with this Beverly is that we that was one of our original thoughts was to try to buy it but it can't be sold so you know what's the purpose well depends on its end use yeah I mean, depends on the use the basketball goal can be. Put anyway. Built on the north side for probably a thousand bucks and a couple volunteers. Uh, well, listen, if Terry's going to, if Terry's willing to leave the, uh, if the church is willing to leave the basketball goals up, then we can have two places. I, I That's right. Get You're getting both. <laughs> <laughs> we put a basketball goal up out there. You had two places. Then you got we instead need to of one. We get more input from the community. Yeah. They well, need to know if we're going to swap their park away. We need to have more input. Every time I, I say that, I'm told that we're elected to represent and make decisions for the community. That's very true. <laughs> so we should I would do that. I'd like to know what some of the other community people think about it. I'm, I'm a little torn on, on this one. We're basically denied. We're asking for a procedural motion just to move forward and not a final decision. Um, I would like to know more of the church's actual concrete, kind of some concrete plans, or if, if you're planning on, you know, building a little bit of a parking lot and then squaring off the building and, and, and seeing what would remain open and closed would ultimately maybe decide how I end up deciding in, in a few weeks. Um, but I wouldn't be opposed at this point to saying let's move forward with the project um, tentatively, but don't 
go counting in the church bulletin, Wells signs off, right? Um, but I, I would like to know more of what your plans are and kind of this concrete and say, hey, we're open to the idea, but let's see what you're actually going to do with it, um, what will remain open, how much of that land is actually going to be turned into church facilities. Well, I would really like to know what the other members of the community think about. Well, that'll give us time for that too, though, because as we move forward here, we still have to get Kansas Department, uh, which one's coming out? Fish and Game, Wildlife, or Parks? They ain't gonna break it or break it. They have to get, they still have to come out and examine it and then come up with a report and then give us a report back. And that should give us plenty of time to get that other community involvement, I would, I would think, yes? They don't move and, and terribly quick, do they? Basically, their report is going to address whether it's of comparable value. I don't think that looks much value because what they told me is they generally re relied on an appraised, appraised value. Okay. They will look at use, suitable use. It's comparable in use. The land can never be sold, though, correct? No. It can never correct. be sold. Well, I wouldn't say that it can never be sold because there's an exception. As long as we maintain it as that park area, then there are certain rules we have to abide by. And if we want to change them, then there's a procedure to change it. But we just can't up and sell it without their permission. It has to be exchanged for something else. So it could be sold if we have another parcel that is suitable in exchange. So we need a motion to present this to KW, KDWP? So I think it's important to see kind of what the feelings of the council are tonight. And if you have enough favor that you want to proceed forward, then we'll have the Department of Wildlife and Parks come over and get, give their opinion. That's, that's what I'd like to do. If we need a formal motion, I'll make the motion that we approve this to have it presented to the KDWP for review. Make a motion. Yep. I did make a motion. I'll second the motion. Um, like I said, I'm on the fence here, but I'll, I'll go along with you on this. Don't. So that's your motion? I said I make a motion that okay. we formally present this to the KDWP. Is okay. that motion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any other further discussion? Hey, uh, the only well, thing I would think of is if, if we did make the swap, we'd want to swap the whole thing. Because then we'd have two parks to maintain instead of one. No. When you say the whole thing. Well, the 2.4 acres to that street, right? Okay, so we're not talking about all of Meadowbrook Park because Meadowbrook Park goes, goes across the street. Goes across the street. So we're only talking the 2.4 acres that's south of Garfield. Right. So all you all all's on that's just the the drainage ditch. What's that? It's drainage that long Oh, so you're gonna have to still maintain it? Yeah, they don't want to mow the drainage ditch. No, who wants to do that? <laughs> Okay, well, I forget what I said. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Two. Two. And please, as you get future plans kind of drawn up if you'll keep the council apprised of them, even if they're tentative and saying, hey, in a perfect world, this is what we'd like to do with it. Um, I know you probably aren't building the tomorrow on that, well, you know, architect, but if the idea at least would kind of help me envision this project. All right. Thank you. All right. Unfinished business, item A, municipal code changes. Carl? Well, I thought I could get away with not doing another ordinance on municipal code updates, but when I started going through to make changes in just the terms city commission to city council, which actually was included in a prior ordinance, I felt like there was more substantive changes than that uh, should get additional council approval. So. This ordinance uh, just includes a few of the details that are changed. Um, 
there are 299 instances of city council in the code. Not all of them are actually city commission in the code. Not all of them are changed to city council because most planning commission items uh, in the Kansas statutes, they refer to them as the vote going to the governing body. So most planning commission items allow the mayor to vote on those issues, not just city council. Um, the other things, um, the Building Trades Board, uh, I think should be deleted. It hasn't been in operation for approximately 10 years, and we don't currently have a need for that since we use the international building codes. Uh, <clears throat> court fines had a recommendation from the, our magistrate judge to increase that to $75 since we were the lowest in the county and the state keeps increasing their portion of that fine that goes to them. And a, a portion of the code on ambulance service on a $5 fee is, is being deleted because that expired in December 2014 going to make a motion we approve ordinance 35 3465 and authorize the mayor to sign it all right we've got a motion and a second all in favor please raise your right hand motion carries thank you carl carl do you need an executive session today yes um I think uh, for 15 minutes on non-elected personnel. Who would you like to include in that? City Council and myself. Uh, so moved. I'll second that. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. I'm out. All right, we're back out here. All right, I would like to nominate Michael Burnett as the interim EMS director for the city of Iola. I would make a motion that the council accept the mayor's nomination. I second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, council and administrative reports. I uh, had the opportunity this last week with a bunch of distinguished guests to tour the new apartments on the east end of town with Iowa Industries and Thrive. And I just want to tell everybody that some of you were there and um, those are looking great. The construction looks great, very sound. Excellent, it's very exciting. John, what have you got for us? Um, Carl, we all, we'd all like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for your time here um, on the council, reining in and trying to herd cats um, is often what you do. Uh, you've done excellent on the budgets, and the city has is in a better spot since before you got here. Um, I'd also like to thank Bob and Donna. Tell them that the new house, the work on the house. Bob, you've been doing the work on the Funston house. Yes. It's looking really great. Um, that is really one of the things. It is a historic marker. It is a fabulous historic society that we have that is research quality at university level, doctoral, postdoctoral, and that's really fantastic for a town of 5,000. So thank everybody. And it, and it is looking great in there too, and it just looks amazing. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Joan. Beverly? Thank you. Bob? Well, I'm not going to be able to make it make it to your uh, retirement party because I'll probably be working. But why do we have those in the middle of the day? I can't quite understand that. But, <laughs> but I sure...
I like working with you, Carl. That's it. Thank you, Bob. We appreciate it, Don. Uh, I just want to thank Carl for his service. I think he's done an outstanding job. And uh, it'll be hard to step in your shoes with her. But uh, I just want to thank you for all you've done. It's been my pleasure to work with you. Very well said, Don. Very well. Sandy? Following suit, I would like to thank Carl for his dedication and patience with the city and keeping the budget under control and we're trying to. And for being uh, faithful to be here every meeting and run it. I also would like to thank the city employees who helped get us our electric back Wednesday morning after the storm. Um, we have a warehouse that has freezers and coolers and a lot of our product would have gone bad and that would have been expensive, but they came out 4.30 Wednesday, offered to work through the night, but they got it on just halfway and that was good enough. They came back 6 o'clock Thursday morning and worked through the day without lunch. I felt bad about that, but they are a very dedicated group of employees. They have an amazing amount of knowledge on how to get things done in the quickest way possible, in the most efficient way. And I, they have my respect, and I give them credit for knowing what to do and when to do it and how to do it. So thank you guys. All of our employees are that way, and I appreciate all of them, from the fire department, the police department, and every place. So. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Sandy. Aaron? <clears throat> yeah, um, Bob stole my thunder a little bit there. I was going to complain about the timing of the the luncheon and the party for you. guess it's on your time. So, but, so hopefully I can make it, but we'll see. You've definitely earned it. I think you've done a wonderful job for us. I think uh, <clears throat> outside of your skills as, a, as an administrator, I think there's a lot to admire for your strength and courage. And you have a heck of a backbone. I think you've stood up to a lot of unfair stuff throughout at least my short time here. And I, <clears throat> I think just the way, the way you've responded has, been, has set a good example for people. And I think it shows how strong your faith is, and I think you should be proud of all that. So I'm happy to have worked with you. And um, so that's that. I have a few things to comment on. I don't know if you guys have noticed the house on Carpenter and Cottonwood is making some progress. Have you guys seen that? They've, they've, they've got it lowered down on, on block, so that looks good. Looks like they paid paid heed. Um, <clears throat> I have some Farm City Days business I'd like to to discuss with you. I've given you guys some packets if you'd like to review them. Um, that summary on the front page is basically what we are looking for. Uh, I think we need probably council approval on. There's a lot of stuff that goes on at the event that has become routine throughout the years, and I don't feel the need to request it from, I don't want to spend the council's time going over it again, basic stuff that can be handled by the department heads, and if the department heads suggest, <clears throat> excuse me, that we we get council approval, then I'll do that, but um, so the easy one is we're, we, as you all know, we're doing the medallion hunt again this year. Um, we, along with the cash prize that can be won, we, we raise money for prizes for people to win for the <clears throat> on the back of the buttons, there's numbers. When you draw the numbers out, people can win that way. It's like a lottery. <clears throat> Last year, the council uh, uh, awarded us a season, a family season pass. This year, I'd like to request two. And I don't know if we can address these. Uh, I'll make that motion. Okay. Second it. Okay, we can do these one at a time. Uh, we have all in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. The second one is regarding uh, we'd like to implement a beer garden 
on uh, at the Farm City Days event this year. We'd really like to have it in the courthouse lawn for for a plethora of reasons. Um, but that's going to go through the county, and I'll visit with them tomorrow. But if if that fails, I'd like to have a backup plan in place so that I can get uh, get the paperwork filed with the state. So it's my understanding we would need we, the council needs to would need to pass a resolution uh, to allow the temporary liquor license and the sale of alcohol on the square. The map I've enclosed for you, it looks like it's it's uh, sorry I don't have page numbers. It's so it's the southern part of the square. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So you're looking, then you need a motion to have them draft the resolution? Yeah, and the I map, will, the I map will make, shows where it's at. I will make a motion to draft the resolution allowing um, beer on as directed by Mr. Franklin. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Okay, this one... This one requires a little bit of the third part here. <clears throat> so last year we had we ran into some major issues with power supply on the courthouse. So um, to kind of break it down into a three-phase project. The first phase we took it upon ourselves to replace all of the GFCI outlets. It was a cost of about twelve hundred dollars. Now it's money we spent based from what we raised from sponsors. Um, after more research and kind of educating myself with. Uh, Jimmy Baker. Uh, we've we've kind of decided that there needs to be a couple more phases implemented here. The, the right now there's a 25 kVA pad mount transformer sitting on the square, and it's powering all of the all of the pedestals. So what needs to be done is we need to take that pedest that pa that transformer, move it to the west side of the square to power those pedestals, and then install a new transformer on the east side to power those pedestals. So I had Jimmy <clears throat> give us a quote for that. Um, we would just be asking that the city supply the labor and we will get the materials through other means. Um, this estimate that you have here in front of you is to basically do what I just said. Install a new transformer and run the wire necessary for that. The, you can see at the top it's got the labor broken down or the, yeah the um, well you can see that it's asking for us to pay for seven hundred and fifty three dollars and thirty nine cents out of the twenty eight eleven seventy Jimmy said that in the past these above line items were something that the city had allowed for so you have a different transformer pad for each side of the sidewalk mm-hmm yep so how many of those stations is there? <clears throat> yeah, on the east side, I think there's five of them. Four. Or on the west side, there's five of them. On the east side, there's currently one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, what, while we were doing this, what we decided to probably be the best thing to do is, is now is just to go ahead and install three more pedestals, two more pedestals. And that quote is, the material on that, again, would be through us, that's the bid that says Stanton Wholesale Electric. It's 888.56. So then the city would just need a couple more hours of uh, trenching. Are they 50 amp pedestals? They're 100 amp pedestals. 100 amp pedestals. Mm -hmm. And the county's okay with the farm city doing this on this the is, courthouse? That's what I'm asking tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so this would be pending their approval tomorrow. Okay. But yeah, so what I'm asking for is this the approval for the city employees to provide the labor to uh, and, and the transformer to to complete this project. And the transformer is No, those are the pedestals. <clears throat>
Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what he he said. He had them just. And, and I take it you've been working with the electrical department, and there this is on a day, on a daily basis. Okay. And they're, they're okay with then they they feel capable of doing they're, this. They're one hundred percent comfortable with it. Jimmy's only hesitation was you know you got to run this through the council. So. Um, I'll make that motion then to approve. Um, the request have the electrical department provide the labor services is to install the wiring and pedestals. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. I think that's all I have. Do Thank have, you. Do they have two 50 amp plugins on each side? Have, Pedestal. Those pedestals have three 20 amp receptacles. A couple of them have uh, 220 amp. They have 50 amps. A couple of them have 50 amps. Quarters of the day. Yeah, the only problem we have is how many extension cords and plug-ins we have on right. one 20 amp plug. fuse plug. Yeah. Basically got people got warmers and I bet you that is a big because a lot of the tents has got warmers and stuff. Yeah, we had some major problems with it last year, and part of that was our failure to ask enough questions up front. And then the other part of it is <clears throat> some part of our vision and is of growing this thing is in, is getting more types of vendors and not just same one. Uh, yeah, and those those newer vendors require they have more power, and more demand for the, We're for the power right now. It's got wow, I know y'all. That's what I'm asking about. It. <laughs> Well, thank you, Aaron. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah. That's why it's I'm trying to get some info for you. I included a little schedule there on the back of what we've got going on for Farm City Day so far. Yeah. We appreciate it. Carl, what else have you got for us? On the community development block grant that the council approved us to pursue, um, I don't think we're going to make the deadlines for this year. We we have to get an engineer involved to design the system. We consulted with one last week. We're still working on the details of putting together this project. And that has to be done before we can actually attend one of the kayak meetings. Um, and then we had to submit the all of the proposals by the 15th of September. So that's not going to happen. So we'll just continue to work on this project for the following year. Uh, I forgot to put on last meeting approval for the city employee picnic that we held, hold every year and approval for five days, personal days off that are given away as part of that picnic. So moved. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Next Tuesday. In the afternoon. Evening. Evening. You can make it for dinner. I don't look at the mail. That's the 16th. You are, all of you are invited and encouraged to attend. Is there anything else on that? I don't think so, Carl. No. Okay, this is my last council meeting. Thank you very much for the opportunity to work for the city and serve for the last five years. It's been uh, mostly a pleasure. And there's always been those days when I wonder why do I ever why did I ever choose a profession like this? But I think that's kind of the thing that I thrive on is having a good challenge. I don't particularly like to sit in a meeting where people give me compliments. I'm more accustomed to criticism. But I've enjoyed the association, the challenges. I think the department heads will do a great job of carrying on the operation. We're going to try to make uh, Sid welcome when he starts next week. We'll have one day overlap. Chance for me to be starting a week from today. So I'll have a chance to kind of give him some briefing on some of the issues and take him around and give him introductions to the staff. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. We appreciate you and your efforts. Well done. I'd like to make a motion for adjournment. Second that. Oh. All in favor, please raise your right hand. I'm going to sit here until they turn Motion carries. Thank you.